Hello, you've caught me re-watching the Lord of the Rings Extended Edition Blu-ray because it's November, it's nearly Christmas, and this is something of a yearly ritual for me. But you know what, I'm, I'm just going to skip the tree beard bit because... Flipping it. Now, I love The Lord of the Rings. It's my all-time favourite, but just as with everything else I love, be it literature, movies or video games, there's always that bit you dread. The bit you put up with that you know is coming and is kind of at odds with everything else and you just hold your breath and plunge through, safe in the knowledge that once you're on the other side, everything will be fine again. This often happens in video games when they try and add variety or a change of pace. And you're like, man, I know variety is the spice of life and everything, but I was perfectly happy doing the same brilliant thing over and over, thanks. Spice is overrated. I like to live my life mildly and with no surprises. Here are seven bits we dread in games we otherwise love to bits. We'll start with a sequence from Batman Arkham Asylum that nearly gave me a full-on panic attack. There I was unlocking gadgets, punching thugs and being really cool, when all of a sudden I find myself in Killer Croc's lair, a subterranean hellhole where you have to walk on rickety wooden panels while being hunted by a 12-foot Manphibian. I know, I know, he's a reptile, not an amphibian. You can stop correcting me in the comments. I just liked the pun, okay? The reason this bit reduced me to a clammy, quivering wreck isn't because it's that scary. I mean, compare this to something in Outlast or Resi 7 and it's a cakewalk. But it's the sudden role reversal. For hours, you have been the predator, stalking terrified goons in an environment perfectly suited to your abilities, one filled with shadows and high up stuff you can escape to if you get spotted. Now, you're in Killer Croc's environment. You can't hide, none of your skills are of any use, and you're being hunted. Everything you've learned up until this point becomes utterly redundant, well, except how to throw a batarang. And, pathetically, Killer Croc exploding out of the liquid muck he calls home unnerved us so much we mostly forgot how to do even that. Oh god, where is he? Where is he? What button? What button is it? Oh god, just get me out of here, please. Next up, we've got Kingdom Hearts. Now, I was going to go with the three hour prologue from Kingdom Hearts 2 for this entry, but that doesn't really fit here. I don't dread the three hour prologue. It just makes me want to corkscrew my own eyeballs out and then write, when the hell do I get to play as Sora in the ensuing torrent of blood? But no, the bit I dread, and it's a bit you have to do nine times, is the initial gummy ship traversal between worlds. It's not hard, at least not at first, and I actually quite like the gummy ship building when you've unlocked all the routes and they become optional. It's just the stress of that first time, when you have to fly the route to unlock the next world and continue with the story. It doesn't help that it looks absurd too, the kind of thing you want off your screen ASAP in case your mate bursts into the room and wonders why on earth you're playing a Walt Disney cheese dream. All of these factors combine to create an experience you just want to be over as quickly as possible. Which, if you're me, makes everything doubly hard. Don't fly into those rings, says my brain, subconsciously firing orders to my thumbs to fly directly into those rings. And the music, too. Look, I'm stressed right now. The last thing I want to hear on repeat when I'm desperately trying to fire my way to Wonderland is... Do -do -do. Our third entry is any underwater level ever. I asked the Twitter hive mind what bits they dreaded in games, and about one in every three responses was the underwater bit in such and such a game, and with good reason. These sequences prey on your fears and uncertainties. Underwater, you're almost always at a disadvantage. And what I mean is, you're in an environment that suits your adversaries, not you, much like Killer Croc in our first entry. You're often up against sharks, puffer fish, aquatic dinosaurs, you know, things that can move far more effectively underwater than you can. 
Things that want to eat you. Also, games naturally feel different underwater. You don't feel as confident in your own abilities. Your movement is slower. It's like trying to fight in a dream. Plus, often there's a whole lack of oxygen thing, effectively adding a time limit to every underwater section in games, as if we needed any more stress. Specific sequences that filled me with dread faster than O2 filled my lungs include this one from Dino Crisis 2. Ugh, Mosasaurs. The bit where you have to rescue Emma in Metal Gear Solid 2, which is an underwater bit and an escort mission bit rolled into one long sequence from the depths of gaming hell. The underwater levels in Crash Bandicoot Warped, which were just hard and stressful, it's Crash, and basically any underwater bit in any of the PS1 Tomb Raider games. Nope, nope, no. Fourth entry, and this particular sequence is my own personal nightmare, so indulge me. Anyone else turn into a mewling baby during the wolf bit in Metal Gear Solid? Again, it's one of those instances where everything is flipped. You've been hiding from guards with eyes for the last two or three hours. Now you're hiding from dogs with noses. Which basically means you can't sneak because they can smell you anywhere. And it's dark and the music goes all creepy, and you can hear them howling and padding about and growling, but you can't see them, unless you stick your night vision goggles on, but then that means you can't equip your rations, and oh my god, where the hell is that little cruel space exit? Let me out of here! When I first played through this bit, I ended up back at the beginning the first three times, because I got so panicked and lost. And it doesn't help that you have to go through the walls no less than four times. Once, because that's the way forward, twice when you're off to look for the sniper rifle, thrice when you're coming back with the sniper rifle, and thrice after you've been tortured, although admittedly that time you can equip the napkin Otacon took from Sniper Wolf, which means you smell like her, so all the wolves love you, and it's really cute actually. Sorry, little puppies, I may or may not have so calmed your aunties and uncles when I came through here the first three times. Number 5. You know Dead Space, the brilliant, brave and brutal survival horror where you're trapped alone in a space station, well I say alone, there are hundreds of necromorphs, but you know what I mean. Dead Space was an electric crack of originality when it arrived in 2008, successfully fusing horror and sci-fi, presenting us with cerebral, satisfying gameplay challenges where even the combat was a sort of puzzle, you know, work out exactly which angle you need to shoot this monstrosity to successfully hack its limbs off. And then there was the bit with the asteroids. Which almost felt like an apology. Sorry, I'm so brilliant, Dead Space was saying. Sorry, you've been enjoying slowly unravelling the mysteries of this evocative sci-fi setting. Sorry, the necromorphs are so wonderfully terrifying. I've done a gamey game shooty gamey bit where you have to blast bits of space rock to calm you down. And if you do it with more than 50% health remaining, we'll even throw in a bronze trophy. Thanks, Dead Space. Can I go back to slowly walking down corridors now though, please? Because this shooting gallery is stressing me out. I can't get the turret to go from there to there quick enough. Now I'm panicking. Damn it, Dead Space. Lock me in a room with 20 necromorphs anytime. Just don't do this. Next, it's the obligatory Final Fantasy entry because I don't play any other games and we could have gone for the Temple of the Ancients in Final Fantasy VII but that's not really what this list is about. That's just a hard, puzzly bit in Final Fantasy VII. It doesn't pull the gameplay rug from under your feet. But in the end, I settled for the Bevel Cloister of Trials from Final Fantasy X. Good lord. Let me out. Please, keep the Aeon, I don't care, even if it is Bahamut. There are multiple stages of irritation with the Bevel Cloister of Trials. First of all, you've got the initial, oh my god, what the hell is this reaction? It's a big maze with weird rules for getting around that seemingly take an aesthetic inspiration from those trippy patterns you see when you press your hands really hard against your eyelids. Cool. The next stage of irritation occurs when you've been around the block about five times and you've sort of fumbled your way to the solution. You approach a junction, you know you need to be turning one way, but ah, oh, you've timed it wrong. Now you'll need to loop back around, which takes ages, and try it again. It's worse than driving through one-way traffic at rush hour. Just let me go back to the random battles, please. Also, that... 
bloody music, listen to it. That, combined with Tidus's irritatingly neutral face, just really set me off. I mean, I'm furious. Tidus should be too. I hate using guides, I really do. It makes me feel all dirty. But for this bit, I just don't care. I've replayed Final Fantasy X about three times over the years, and I always get my official piggyback out for this bit. I don't have time to waste. I've got a family now, and more importantly, a Master League. Our final entry is the mother of all dreaded bits, which is a clumsy title, yes, but the Fair Play mission in the original Mafia deserves nothing more, specifically the race bit within the Fair Play mission. Now, if you're not familiar with this, you'll at least be familiar with the concept. Brilliant open world game with slightly less than brilliant driving presents unskippable racing mission with obligatory win conditions. Yes, Jack 2 and Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. You! And even The Witcher 3 with its horsey stuff, but anyway, back to Mafia. This game is set in the 30s. The supercars of the 30s aren't like the supercars of today. They look exactly as they handle, like hollowed out bars of soap. And you have to win this race. Second place? No. Start again. Even your protagonist, Tommy Angelo, seems surprised at this. And never raced before. And complains and complains and complains. I'm not a racer. I'm probably not going to be able to win. But the calm old guy with the glasses is like, yeah, I know. Do it anyway. It's like telling the bloke in charge of the hospital vending machines, oh, the head surgeon's ill today, so we're going to need you to perform the triple heart bypass. Is that all right? So it's time to race, and yes, it's hard. We've all had that thing, right, where we get out in first place and you get all jittery and end up wrapping your car around a tree on the last corner because you can't take the pressure, right? Add Mafia's special slip slide mobile into the mix and you've got a recipe for, oh my god, just let let me get back to playing the actual game, please. And there we are, seven bits we dread in games that we love. There were loads mentioned on Twitter that I haven't included, the hotel basement in The Last of Us, Ravenholm in Half-Life 2, the bit in The Fade in Dragon Age Origins, so do tell us in the comments about your own personal moments of woe. After you've done that, click the like button and make a note to come back next week for another Friday feature. Thanks for watching.